We are in Los Angeles, at the end of the 1970s. An unknown caller contacts a woman and we see her being observed. He makes it clear to her that she is being watched. The conversation also suggests that he has harassed her over the phone before. We meet 29-year-old Lee, who is new in Los Angeles and is inspecting an apartment in a complex called Arkham Towers. The real estate agent informs her that the building is equipped with state-of-the-art technology. Impressed, Lee decides to take the apartment. Shortly after, we see her being observed through a telescope, but Lee is completely unaware of it, for now. Lee heads to the downtown area to start her new job as a television director at KJHC. Her first assignment is to oversee a cooking show, where she meets her colleague and future friend, Sophie. Upon arriving at her new office, she receives a call from the menacing voice of our anonymous stalker. Lee appears visibly puzzled but doesn't think much of it. When Lee returns to her apartment, she finds her door open, but she doesn't think much of it and remains unfazed. She assumes that the building superintendent must have performed some final tasks in her apartment, like connecting the telephone. When she inquires about it on the phone, the superintendent confirms that he locked the apartment when leaving. Meanwhile, we, as the viewers, see who was responsible for the open door, but Lee remains oblivious to it. Later in the evening, Lee receives a call from her new colleague, Steve, who tries to flirt with her. Slightly annoyed, she politely declines his advances and makes it clear that she is not interested. Unbeknownst to Lee, we, the viewers, see that she is being eavesdropped on, and shortly afterward, we discover that she is also being watched. Our anonymous stalker seems to have set their sights on her. The next day, Lee receives a letter from Excursions Unlimited, informing her that she might have won a vacation to Europe. Initially skeptical, Lee dismisses the letter without much thought. However, in the evening, she decides to take another look at it, and that's when things start to get strange. The lights in her room begin to flicker subtly but noticeably. Lee can't help but wonder what to make of it all. Later that evening, she goes to a bar and meets a guy named Paul. As they get to know each other, they engage in playful banter and Lee reveals her humorous side. On their way back to her car, they grow closer and Lee learns that Paul works as a philosopher at the university. They bid each other farewell affectionately, but little do they know they are not alone and are being watched. The next day, Lee discovers a package with a suitcase at her door, but she can't quite make sense of it. Shortly after, she receives a phone call informing her that she has just received her first gift. Naturally, she becomes curious about what's inside the suitcase. To her surprise, she finds a telescope hidden inside. Along with the telescope, there's a card from Excursions Unlimited, the same company that sent her the travel letter before. Later that evening, Lee receives another anonymous gift from the doorman of the apartment complex. As she unwraps the present, she can't shake the feeling of being watched once again. Inside the package, she finds a bikini, along with another card from Excursions Unlimited. Shortly after, the phone rings, and the anonymous voice informs her that she has just received gift number two. Lee is now even more unsettled and uncertain about what's happening. When Paul comes over to Lee's for dinner, she opens up to him about the anonymous calls and the strange things she has received. She reveals that this isn't the first time such incidents have occurred. Back in New York, where she used to live, similar events took place. After Paul leaves, the phone rings once again. The anonymous voice wishes her sweet dreams, leaving Lee increasingly frightened and disturbed by the situation. The next day, Paul informs her that the company Excursions Unlimited seems to be non-existent, leaving Lee puzzled and unsure of how to proceed with this newfound information. Later that evening, when she receives another call at home, she decides to call the police, hoping for assistance. Unfortunately, they cannot take action until something concrete happens. As the lights start to flicker again, Lee becomes visibly frustrated and agitated by the situation. Lee receives a package containing disturbing photos, and upon arriving at her apartment, she finds a note from Excursions Unlimited stating that they wanted to discuss her travel destination, but missed her. The note adds that they'll be waiting in the garage until 1130 Feeling uneasy, Lee grabs a sharp letter opener and heads towards the garage, determined to confront whoever is behind all this. Lee searches the garage frantically when she hears a noise coming from the laundry room. Unable to locate anyone inside, she accidentally drops her weapon in fright. As she attempts to retrieve the letter opener from under a grate, she hears approaching footsteps. Swiftly, she hides under the grate and glimpses a man from below, whom she suspects to be her stalker. Fleeing back to her apartment as fast as she can, she finds a new note waiting for her, suggesting they must have narrowly missed each other, but it is promised that she will get contacted again. 
Paul is back to comfort the distressed Lee, and she asks him to stay the night, a request he gladly accepts. Unbeknownst to them, the stalker continues to watch and listen. The next morning, Paul has to leave early for a lecture at the university. Lee's sense of security quickly fades when the phone rings again. The stalker taunts her, suggesting that he prefers her without a robe and asks her to take it off. Terrified, Lee hides in the bathroom, feeling utterly frightened and vulnerable. Paul advises her to move, but Lee refuses, determined not to let the stalker dictate her life. Paul and Sophie visit Lee for moral support when the apartment complex doorman rings her doorbell. He has another letter from Excursions Unlimited, stating that Lee didn't qualify for the trip, and now only the removal process remains. The police prove to be of little help, offering only unhelpful advice as they explain that unfortunately, nothing that has happened so far can be legally prosecuted. Paul and Sophie are concerned for Lee's safety and don't want her to spend the night alone, but she remains resolute in not letting anyone drive her out of her apartment. Soon after, another call comes in, demanding that she remove her curtains so she can be better observed. Sophie and Paul spot someone using a telescope in the building opposite and they quickly connect the dots, suspecting this man to be the stalker. The police visit the man and take him into custody, but he vehemently denies any involvement, and concrete evidence cannot be found to link him to the stalking incidents. Despite being released, the man remains under police surveillance for six months and is forced to leave his apartment. Lee feels visibly relieved, hoping that the ordeal is finally over. However, her relief is short-lived, as she soon receives another letter from Excursions Unlimited, warning her that the removal process will now commence. The police interpret this letter as a sort of final farewell note to Lee, urging her not to be overly alarmed and advising her to let the matter rest. For Lee, the matter is far from over, and she doesn't feel like it's truly finished yet. While peering through her telescope, she spots another man, also busy with a telescope. Lee is now convinced that they got the wrong person, and her stalker is still out there. Fearing the consequences after the last warning, Lee hesitates to call the police again and decides to take matters into her own hands. With determination, she grabs a knife and heads to the neighbor's house, enlisting Sophie's support for the venture. Lee finds the door unlocked and cautiously enters the apartment. Inside, she discovers a high-tech telescope and a recording device. To her shock, she also stumbles upon a notebook meticulously documenting everything the stalker has done to her. However, while Lee is inside the stalker's apartment, it seems that he manages to intrude into her own place and target Sophie there. The police dismiss Lee's claims, offering explanations for everything she tells them, such as Sophie leaving town and the apartment belonging to a man who has been absent for two months. Despite Lee's persistence, the police remain convinced that they already caught the culprit. Feeling abandoned and isolated, with Sophie missing and Paul away at a conference, Lee is left entirely on her own. The stalker continues to taunt her, playing mind games that only add to her distress. During another unsettling call, Lee accidentally knocks over her table, revealing a hidden bug the stalker had planted to spy on her. As Lee sits in her car, she receives a chilling message over the walkie-talkie that previously belonged to Sophie confirming her worst fears. Sophie is dead. Paul returns, and finally, Lee can confide in him. Together, they contemplate the stalker's next move. They come to the unsettling conclusion that the stalker might work for a maintenance company, granting them unrestricted access to the buildings. In their investigation, they discover that an inspector from a maintenance company could have access to all the buildings using a master key. They narrow down the suspect list to one person responsible for inspecting the systems in Arkham Towers. Lee tells Paul that she plans to head to the studio, but instead, she decides to venture alone to the house of the suspected inspector. Undeterred by the potential danger, she is determined to get to the bottom of the whole situation and even breaks into the seemingly empty house. Inside, she discovers Excursion's unlimited letterhead, another telescope, brochures on technical devices, and information about the bug she found on her. She updates Paul over the phone, while outside the house, we see someone moving stealthily. However, it turns out to be just the taxi driver who eventually takes Lee back to the Arkham Tower. Before meeting Paul, Lee decides to return to her apartment one last time to secure the evidence of the bug. However, upon arrival, the bug is gone, and suddenly the lights go out. Feeling that she is not alone, Lee searches her apartment, only to find the open circuit box. When she tries to leave the apartment, the door is locked, trapping her inside. She discovers another letter that reads like a farewell note, seemingly written by herself. 
Undeterred, Lee challenges her stalker, speaking into the empty room, hoping to lure him out. She attempts to make noise to draw attention to herself when suddenly, the stalker attacks her, and a life-or-death struggle ensues between them. The stalker tries to throw her off the balcony, but Lee manages to grab a shard of glass from the shattered balcony window and stabs him in the back with it. I hope you enjoyed this recap of John Carpenter's Someone's Watching Me from 1978. It's an often overlooked early work by the master of horror, already showcasing many elements that would later appear in Halloween and other of his influential works. Stay tuned for more thrilling recaps in the future. See you in the next one.